Hey, word warriors. So let's get right down to business today. This week is recovering a sense of identity. And last week we really did address, you know, protecting your artist child. And um, I hope you're writing your morning pages every day. You should be doing that. Uh, possibly you are now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold. Hopefully now you're using your channel journal and starting to be able to have communications with your highest intent, your highest self, and getting that down on the page. So something that you're going to encounter along the way is skepticism, uh, self-doubt. So whatever idea you have, <clears throat> whatever creative path you're choosing to go down, I want you to understand that it's very normal and actually part of the process to have moments where you just, you don't really, you don't know if what you're doing is valid. Let me put it to you that way. Is this just a big waste of time? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Every creative endeavor <clears throat> is worth your time just for the process itself. If you were drawn to these videos, it's because you're already in the process of creating something and or you have been fantasizing about creating something. So the difference between actually having the work to show and not having it is putting in the time and creating that balance in your life. So it's really important <clears throat> that at this point you are making your creativity as important as your daily exercise, having your dinner, going to work, spending time with your family. All of these things are important and really aren't up for being taken off the list for most of us. And, you know, maybe the gym will get knocked off. It's the things that always get knocked off the list are the things that you don't have to do, that someone else isn't holding you accountable for. You're only holding yourself accountable. But every time you break that promise to yourself, you chip away a little bit at a time what's important to you. And so I'm gonna invite you to start making the promises that you make to yourself just as important as the promise you make to your boss that you're going to be to work the next day or to your children that you're going to have dinner on the table. More often times than not, the first promises that get broken are the ones that we make to ourselves. And you know this resonates in your heart. We've all done it. And it's just because there's so much to do in a day. You make little excuses as you go. Oh, you know, I'm too tired. I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like getting up half an hour early to write my morning pages. I'll skip the gym today. I'm, I'm really not feeling it. So it's fine to do that once in a while, but if you're doing that day after day after day, you're not gonna achieve the goals. You know, you can't sit on your couch, watch TV and eat potato chips and expect to get in supreme physical shape. You can't expect that novel to get written if you're not gonna show up to the keyboard and type, even if what you write is crap. <laughs> That's a professional term, by the way. You have to be willing to write bad in order to write good. I had to write a lot of pages and if I was just focused on the end product, I would have never gotten some of the amazing work that I'm starting to put out now, but it took me a while. So I want you to, this week is about recovering your sense of identity by getting rid of what this book, uh, The Artist's Way, hopefully you got a copy of this. Um, I'm on page 49. She first talks about crazy makers. I feel like I kind of went over that in the last video, so I don't want to get too deep into that. But crazy makers are anyone in your life that <clears throat> takes up an enormous amount of your time. And they're a friend, they're a family member. There's someone that just thrives off of drama 
and normally they are the, the, the center point of the drama, and you're constantly kind of sucked into this vortex of really make-believe um, problem-solving for them, and all the while you're breaking promises to yourself about writing that novel, going to the gym, but we're going to focus on our writing right now. So you need to get rid of the crazy makers. <clears throat> when I read this book when I was only 20, I had to go through my life and get very honest with myself. And it's not even about blaming the crazy makers that you identify. It's that you have to take ownership and be the guardian of your own time. So this week I really want you to take a step back and start observing your interactions with people and I want you to identify those crazy makers and for right now you're gonna need to kind of put them on the back burner and don't answer that text in the middle of the night asking for your advice you know we feed into this it's an addictive it's an addictive pattern trying to fix people so please pay attention to that the next thing we do is like I said the the self-doubt and the, the skepticism it'll go something like this in your brain you know you wrote something in your morning pages maybe you had a breakthrough and this little voice will go through your head yeah I mean that's really great and all but you probably won't have this kind of experience tomorrow when you do it or you'll go back over the, the writing and well, it's not that great so this happens to me all the time when I'm creating There'll be this little subliminal critic in my head. You really need to work at turning the volume down on that critic, okay? Give your artist the space to just create without being criticized. And you're actually your own worst critic. I'm sure all of you already know that. But pay attention to that. And silence that bully within that wants to kind of beat down what is new and blossoming inside of you. It's really important to stake your claim. I'm a writer. I'm a musician. I'm fill in the blank. You deserve it. We're all creators. We all have unique gifts. And the first step to creative recovery is claiming what it is you are creating and that you are a creator of that thing. Whether you've really got any solid work to show, it's by making that statement, that claim, and then taking action every day. The book's not gonna write itself. That song isn't gonna write itself. You have to show up and channel that energy. The critic in you, the crazy maker in your life, not allotting yourself the time, these are all challenges for you to overcome <clears throat> so that you can get into that space and create. So up until this point, that's what we've been talking about and, and clearing. You gotta get clear before you can get clear. So I really want you to focus on that this week. And then the uh, assignment that I want you to do is, this one's really good. You draw a pie chart. It's number seven, it's on page 57 if you have the book, the artist way. Draw a circle, divide it into six pieces of pie. Label one piece spirituality, another exercise, another play, and so on with work, friends, romance, adventure. Place a dot in each slice at the degree to which you are fulfilled in that area. And the outer rim indicates great inner circle, not so great. Connect the dots. This will show you where you are lopsided. As you begin the course, it is not uncommon for your life pie to look like a tarantula. As recovery progresses, your tarantula may become a mandala. Working with this tool, you'll notice that there are areas of your life that feel impoverished and on which you spend little or no time. 
use the time tidbits you are finding to alter this. If your spiritual life is minimal, even a five minute pit stop into a synagogue or cathedral or meditation can restore a sense of wonder. Many of us find that five minutes of drum music can put us in touch with our spiritual core. For others, it's a trip to a greenhouse. The point is that even the slightest attention to our impoverished areas can nurture them. It's great advice, it's a great exercise for you to do. So you can identify. Many times it's just bringing awareness to the things that we are completely ignoring in our life that are very important to us. And so creating that visual, the pie, I think can be very powerful. I know when I first did this, it, it really, it really um, gave me the, the desire to want to change this. You know, here on one side of my pie, I've got advice to friends is like taking up half of my pie. And, you know, my creativity is this little tiny slice. All the things that actually really meant a lot to me, I wasn't dedicating my time to, which uh, feeds your self-critic. Ah, you big failure. Look at you. And so when you break promises to yourself, you are giving power to the bully, the critic within to keep you down. Yes, we all have a part of ourselves that is our own worst enemy. And the trick is to identify that and to start working at clearing, taking that energy away from that part of yourself and to minimize it until it's absolutely gone. So I had a breakthrough with my writing last week in my novel and I wanted to invite all of you. I used my webcam instead of taking all of these notes because as a writer I'm already writing enough and I've got like this 50 page outline for this novel and it's oh it's starting to really frustrate me. <laughs> so one day when I was working at the gym I had a new idea and I thought I'm just gonna come home and I'm gonna talk on my webcam to myself you know it's just for me. And this way I can listen to it when I'm like uh, cooking my breakfast, you know, doing anything around the house to refresh myself of what my, my inspired thought was. People, for whatever you do, use your webcam as a way when you get that little inspired, you know, piece of poetry, a piece of music, whatever, just get your cam out record that thought and then it's there and you know it's safe and so when you're ready to revisit it sometimes it might be a few days uh, you've got it there and you can refresh yourself and it's because it it captures your emotion as well that I found it very powerful and now what I'm doing is basically brainstorming on the webcam one chapter at a time whereas usually I would write my outline as a writer, I'm telling you, it's absolutely brilliant new tool. Uh, I invite you to try using it and, and let me know how that goes. So that's it for this week. I'm very proud of each of you and I love you all. Namaste.